Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're talking about NZXT's Noctis 450 case, also called the N450. This new case by NZXT uses the existing H440 chassis, the frame, so the interior of the H440 is effectively identical to the interior of the N450, the new case, and to that end, if you like the interior of the H440, you might like the N450, but it's got some pretty big aesthetic differences. For those who did not like the interior for the H of the H440 for whatever reason, you will definitely not like this case also because it uses the same thing. The new Noctis 450 by NZXT costs $140, which puts it in the competitive price range of quite a few other cases. It is certainly entering the enthusiast range of computer cases and is competing alongside items like the Corsair 760T which is currently priced at about $140 after discounts. Other same range competitors would include the Silent Base 800 by Be Quiet, which is a slightly different target market, and Fractal's Arc XL, which is, again, a slightly different target market, but they are all $140 cases. The main selling point of NZXT's new Noctis 450 is entirely that it uses the H440 frame with a new look. And in an interview with NZXT's former case designer Chun Tai, who worked on this case, we learned that the Noctis 450 was an attempt to move away from the negative connotation associated with gamer quote-unquote chassis, and that would include things like uh, NZXT's old Guardian, which is, compared to this, quite hideous, if we're all being honest here. And NZXT isn't the only company that's done this. Aerocool does it, Zygmatech, Zalman, Anyone who makes a quote-unquote gamer aesthetic case is at some level and at some point in time guilty of using very cheap quality components, very cheap plastic, and creating what might look cool to a certain audience, but once you get it in your hands you realize that this is kind of cheap and I actually don't like it anymore. So that's what they're trying to move away from with this. NZXT really wants to differentiate themselves by employing an artful use of the gamer look without being cheap or gaudy, and it's really up to you guys to decide that. I will review it to the best of my abilities, but I'm trying to remain objective, so I will let you decide if you like it or not. Going over the core specs of the N450, we learned that there are three 120mm fans in the front, one 140mm fan in the back, and that's about it for the stock cooling. So you've got a very push-intensive configuration, and in our smoke tests, we show where the hot spots are and if there are any dead zones. And yes, there's a new smoke test. Now I wanna make a quick note that a lot of cases on the market, especially thermal take cases, will make very heavy note of how many radiators they support, where they support them, what type of radiators, and it's cool. I like that people want to support liquid cooling, and there are definitely users who will make use of that, especially with open loop stuff, but at the end of the day, the vast majority of gamers, system builders buying these cases are maybe deploying one liquid cooling unit. So uh, I wouldn't get too hung up on case specifications where you're choosing between cases strictly because of the radiator count, unless you know that you're gonna be using more than one. For example, if you're cooling the GPU with a CLC as well as the CPU. Speaking of radiator support, the N450 has 25 to 26-ish millimeters of clearance above the steel of the chassis in the compartmentalized top panel. So if you want to install your radiator up there, there's just barely enough room, and then you can install your fan on the underside to hold it in, and we recommend a push configuration in that instance. Some radiators we found will have difficulty fitting in the case at all, including the Sidon series, which is becoming increasingly rare due to a thrashing put forth by Ace Attack, who sued Cooler Master for their Sidon series, but also things like Antex, larger 1250, and other cooler brand products. And this is because uh, when you install them, they'll hang down from the steel chassis and then you obstruct your EPS 12 volt connector. And that is inherent with any mid tower case. You just don't have the room to play as you would with a full tower case. The big thing with the N450 that's very easy to overlook because it was also the big thing with the H440 and the S340 is the power supply shroud. So the power supply shroud on this covers the power supply, it covers the cables, and it even connects with the drive bays and then covers all the drives. Uh, the S340 doesn't have drive cages in the same fashion. It uses a cable management bar instead, but the H440 did obviously because it's the same chassis. And the fact that there is continuous coverage from the power supply to the drive bays is actually noteworthy because you have other companies like uh, the old Half-X by Cooler Master made several years ago. 
attempted to install a power supply shroud, but it was pretty poorly executed. Anyone who used it will remember that they just removed it, most likely. And then more modern cases, like the Fantax Enthu Lux, which does make use of a power supply shroud and very closely resembles some NGXT products, uh, has a gap in the shroud to the drive bays, and it doesn't look that great. So this is something that NZXT does very well. Cable management, of course, is a big deal these days with just about any case, and in the H440 and now the N450, the new case, the, the cable management pass-throughs are all the same, so if you know them, then you already know them for the N450. But items that are worth noting that NZXT does well would include the pass-through on the power supply shroud at the top, for the PCI Express connector, so you can shoot a PCIe connector straight through the PSU shroud and eliminate the need to go behind the motherboard tray, which of course reduces clutter and makes it easier to close the panel and many other things. So that goes straight into the video card, and that is a feature that I am a fan of. Another item that is very small that I don't think many people will notice is that NZXT actually has several pass-throughs for the EPS 12 volt connectors up at the top, where the motherboard mounts at the, at the very top of the case, and this is worth noting because not all motherboards position that EPS connector in the same spot. So with some cases you end up having issues connecting the EPS connector, you need to route it a different way or get an extension cable because it's not in the right place. And that's because boards will position it either left or right or center of the CPU. So obviously build quality is a big thing here as evidenced by NZXT's efforts to make the N450 a poster child of modern gamer cases and, and the higher build quality that NZXT wants associated with them. So we analyzed this carefully with everything ranging from the chassis itself, the underlying frame, the structure, all the way down to the thumb screws and the paint. And that's a pretty big range of things, but I've got a few items of note for you. First of all, the chassis is very sturdy, and this is something we know from the H440. The plastic paneling feels good. It has a good feel. It has a good look. Maybe not aesthetically, depending on how you feel, that's a subjective item, but in terms of the actual quality of the plastic and the paint, it does look pretty good. Unfortunately, there's a lot more to it than looks, and if you just even run your fingernail lightly along the surface of the plastic, it will leave a mark. It will mar the case. That is not a permanent scratch. It can be rubbed off with just basically brushing your hand on it, so it's leaving a trail of dead skin or something, I don't know, something gross. But uh, that, that does speak to the quality of the paint. It does give concern that the paint is not particularly strong. And this is something that was reinforced when I built the system. I built it on this table, actually. So I was building it on this table, and I ended up with a couple scratches in the case, in the paint, on the panels. And that's really something that doesn't normally happen. The H440 uses a different type of paint. I can tell just by feeling it. It's a lot stronger. It has zero scratches on it, and it's been through a hell of a lot more build cycles in this case, which has been through two build cycles. So that is a small mark against the N450. If you're careful and you keep this in mind when you're building and when you move it around, you'll probably be okay. There might be one small scratch, but nothing too terrible. Another very small item of note that I want NZXT to resolve is their thumb screws. And they, they've heard me complain about this before, but in many of NZXT's recent cases, it has been the case that the thumb screws are over torqued when I receive the case and when many customers receive the case, I'm sure. And this is just a factory issue. If they could get the torque spec right, I could actually use my thumbs and fingers and whatever to take the thumb screw out of the case and not have to resort to a screwdriver. Now, obviously I can use a screwdriver to take it out, so it's not like it's a an inhibiting issue. But if you're gonna have thumb screws, you should go through the effort of making sure the user can actually use their thumbs to remove the screws. Otherwise, might as well just use a cheaper screw. And other cases from competitors do this a little bit better, especially Corsair. Ease of installation is the same as the H440, so if you want to know more about that, watch our H440 review. The short form is that it's very easy to install a system in this case. It does not have a five and a quarter bay, so keep that in mind when you're buying parts. But the lack of a five and a quarter bay does lend us some benefits elsewhere like less clutter, a smaller drive cage area, and generally just better airflow and looking better. Solid state drives can be mounted on the top of the power supply shroud, which is something I like because I like showing off the surface of the SSDs. Companies like PNY and Kingston go through efforts to make them look good these days. Let's talk about the smoke test. So this is something that, first let's make it very clear, our smoke test is not scientific. I have not finalized methodology for it. I am not using a thermographic imager to 
log better results and hotspots, but just for sake of experimentation and fun and learning about how cases work, we decided to build a smoke testing rig, i.e. large piece of cardboard that was insulated and a tunnel connecting the smoke test chamber to the case where the intake is and then ignite a smoke pellet used for testing HVAC leaks and things like that. And this shows in high speed footage the air channels of the case and we recorded this at 120 FPS and at 60 FPS using two different cameras. Helps us slow it down and we can see where the hot spots in the case are. So if you watch very carefully here, you'll see that the smoke sort of swirls in a circle in the top right of the case and the bottom right of the case. And these are, uh, in one aspect, significant areas, the bottom right being near the GPU. And this swirl is happening because the intake comes in at the bottom fan, it's the, the bottom most fan comes in hits the video card, some of it gets sucked into the video card, and then uh, the video card does not have the capacity to pull in all of that air, so the rest of it ends up spinning in a vortex until it can be consumed and spat out the case. If you look closely, you'll notice that there's very little exhaust at the bottom of the case. There are a couple of drilled out holes, but nothing major, there's no fan back there, and this will be impacted based on the video card you have more so than the case, but the case can certainly assist in the dissipation of thermals toward the bottom and this is especially true when you have a side fan and I've yet to find a case that has a side panel fan that does not cool the video card better than those without them. If you watch closely all the air gets siphoned out the bag very quickly and it even accelerates as as time goes on as more smoke fills the case as the CPU fan speeds up it shoots out the back and then the rest of it sort of drifts toward the top. And this is actually useful information to know. So what we can learn here functionally and practically from the smoke test is that you should not install a fan in the top rear position, the backmost position. This is something I've tested in the past with thermal benchmarks proving the statement. And this is because it will siphon air away from the CPU cooler. So you end up with a warmer CPU as a result and it doesn't actually give you any benefit. If you wanna install a fan on the top and not a radiator, just a fan, you should do it in the front top position because that will actually assist in getting some of the air out of the drive cages. If you look in the drive cage area, there's actually a lot of sitting smoke and having a fan in this position will pull that away and shoot it out the top of the case. So it's not perfectly scientific and we're still developing it, but it's a cool test. It sort of shows the very basic concepts of airflow in a case and it does so on a super cheap budget. I mean, we, we can't afford the high-end airflow testing chambers that these companies have, so it's not a bad move. So that is the N450. Overall, it's a good case. It has a few points of improvement and the $140 price point may be out of reach of some users. The aesthetic is cool and well executed, but again, not for everybody. If you want something more subdued, look at some of the other NZXT options, the S340, the H440 included, or look at their competitors like Corsair's 760T, which is a really cool case and has a big quality glass side panel, or even Fractal products. The uh, Arc XL is an example of something sort of different. The Be Quiet Silent Base 800 is a very quiet case. It's bigger than this. It is a lot more plasticky, but it's quiet and it's the same price. So you've got plenty of options out there. The N450 is worth a strong consideration. Check the link in the description below for more information on this case. And be sure to check back in about a month when we get our thermal benchmark fully operational and we're executing thermal tests again. We haven't done that for cases in a little while and I'm pretty excited to get it set up. So subscribe to the channel and I will see you all next time.